Okay, uh, this uh, material is covered in other videos, but I just thought make a quick one uh, because I I reference these ideas uh, sometimes. First of all, um, what is the ARF file? So um, you can see here that uh, you've got a the ending is dot ar. I apologize, this is quite small. I think uh, you've got a dot arff file here. And if you open that up, uh, let's just check the format. I'll open it up in WordPad, like that. And uh, I, I know this is a little bit small, uh, <coughs> but uh, this is the format for the um, that Weka prefers. Now, you can use CSV files, but uh, Weka prefers this. And you can uh, open a CSV file and save it into this format. <coughs> and I think that might be a good idea. Up here is the name of the data set. Now, one thing is that uh, this is different than the file name. Now, it may be the same here, but it actually isn't, I think. Uh, but anyway, this is the way Weka references it. It doesn't really have anything to do, I believe, with the file name. It's this. <coughs> so, um, that's the file name and it's listed as at relations. So if you want to give the, not the file name, the data set name, uh, you would write at relation and then the data set name. <coughs> and actually, actually the name goes all the way to here, I can see. So it's kind of an unwieldy name, but anyway, that's the name of this data set. Next uh, section is where you uh, define the attributes um, or the variables. And uh, <coughs> so in this data set, I have date, time, temperature, humidity, rainfall, pressure, dew point, and gust. And you can see that all of these are of type numeric, except for the last one, uh, gust, <coughs> um, which is a categorical variable. When you have a categorical variable, you have to list every value that um, it takes within the entire data set. So apparently in this data set, um, gust 01 only takes on the values 0 and 1, because those are the only numbers here. I don't know if you can see this very well. I wonder if I can make this bigger. I suppose I can. Uh, let's see. If I do that, make it bigger. Or maybe that's a little bit better. So, you can see, it only takes on the value 0 and 1. You have to do it like this, okay? And so, uh, this is, then, then comes the actual data, which you label like this, this beginning of it like that, and then you start to list the data, and it should be comma separated. So, uh, this is the first value in the first record, so 39934, so that's a time, somehow, and 10.7 is a temperature, and 88 is a humidity, and so on. And you can, if you go through this data set, it better be true that the last <coughs> uh, entry of each row, row is uh, either a 0 or 1, otherwise you'd have to list more values in here. Okay, <coughs> so that's the, um, that's the R format. And then, um, <coughs> The other thing I wanted to explain here is, uh, <coughs> by the way, if you, if you noticed, let me just show you that again. The, there were seven, one, two, three, there were seven variables here. The last one, gust zero one, is the seventh one. Now, what I'm going to do next is, suppose that this wasn't um, a categorical, suppose it was numeric. Okay, then I want to show you what you sh what one thing you could do. You don't have to do this, but um, oftentimes this is useful. Sometimes it just gets in the way. Um, <coughs> so when you open up uh, a file in Weka, so I'm opening it from this interface, Explorer, and I open the file here, <coughs> and I find the file, 
and I'm going to be opening uh, our file. You just choose the kind of file here and our file and uh, So I open that up. Now, <coughs> this box is uh, in the newer version of Weka. Means like newer version. I think means 2.9 or something like that. <coughs> and uh, so, if you click this, sometimes it's useful. It sounds like sometimes it just gets in the way. It invokes an options dialog box. So just before it opens it up, it, uh, it, you, you can make a few suggestions, I guess, or something. So. Um, I'll click that here and then I'll open this data set. <coughs> or actually I think I'll open yeah, whatever. Okay, I'll open that one. Uh okay, it didn't do what I expected. That's all right. I I guess it didn't do it what I expected because um let me try it again. Um let me open maybe a different one because I thought maybe Let's see. If I open a CSV file, <coughs> whoops. If I open, now as I said, I know I've done this in other videos, but uh, CSV file, let me try this. <coughs> and now I'm going to uh, open this. Hope this is the same one. Maybe it's not. Alright, anyway, I'll try it. Uh, open it with this clicked. Now it gives you a slightly different options dialog box. And the thing I wanted to say is here it says nominal attributes and you can specify now that you want mm, I think, let's see, you can make it nominal even if it wasn't, I think. So if, let's say the seventh variable you want to make nominal. Let's see if this works. So I'll put in 7 here and click OK. OK, so here we have, uh, actually I got the wrong one, but anyway, let's see if it made it nominal. Dew point. Yeah, it did. OK, the other ones are numeric. And how about this one? Yeah, these are all numeric. Actually, I meant to hit this one as being nominal, but I, I got the seventh one. Uh, but anyway, you can do that to make a variable nominal. Okay, <coughs> now the next thing I wanted to show in this short video is, um, let me try that again. Oops, I didn't need to close that. By the way, uh, in other videos I've sort of forgotten to say that you can hit the undo button when you've done something and then you want to undo it. Uh, you can just hit the undo button. So I, Anyway, let's open this one and uh, go to here and go to this one. Okay, got the same one that I was working with before. I'm not going to open the dialog box because uh, I, I, it's already nominal, I believe. And even if it wasn't, I want to show you what you could do. I, I'm sure I've said this before as well. So is it still nominal? Yeah, this one is nominal. Suppose I wanted to make this nominal. You can do that. I, I I've shown this many times in other videos, but uh, you can do that here. Choose the filter. Um, supervised. No, it's unsupervised. Attributes. And <coughs> numeric to nominal. And uh, now it's set to default to all of them. So that's definitely, I don't like that. Uh, I don't want all of them. I only want, suppose, the sixth one. So I better click on this. Instead of saying first to last, just say the sixth one. Suppose I want to, no, sorry, the fifth one is what I want to do. Or whatever. Let's say the fifth one. I wanted to do that. Make that uh, nominal. So I could do this, do that this way. So I do that. And now the fifth one should be, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't apply it yet. You have to apply it. And now the fifth one should be nominal. Okay, but actually I don't want it to be nominal. So I'm going to undo it. Like I said, you can undo that. You can also remove variables from here uh, by clicking on them and remove. But I don't want to do that either. So 
I'm going to undo that. Actually, I do want to remove date and time. Um, by the way, for those of you working on this particular problem with the Gus, uh, it's better to figure out a way just to get the hour of the day. And uh, in, in a lot of these videos, I used the date and time. I used to, I converted the date and time to a number. But that's not such a great way to do it, actually. It's better to just extract. You can use Excel or I don't know other ways to extract the time of day. I think that's more valuable. Uh, so I would suggest that. Um, anyway, I'm just going to remove this for this example. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about was, and I've, uh, well, is the um, confusion matrix. Just want to show you show that I make reference to that, um, and that is when you're doing classification. So suppose we did um, a, uh, a tr let's say a tree. Um, I'll do the simple cart tree, and uh, I'll just make it simple and do this, and click start. And this is called the confusion matrix. Can I make? Can I view this in a bigger sheet? View this in a separate window. Can I make that bigger? I don't know if I can make the font bigger on this. No. There's some way to uh, see, select all, copy. There must be other ways to do this. Um, Just looking at the confusion matrix. Let's try. Okay. So um, what we just did was try to predict Gus. And Gus, remember, was new, uh, a nominal variable. It was a 0, 1 variable. And um, here's the confusion matrix. And um, along the top is the way we is um, how how the model has classified, and along here is the the true uh, situation, or the sometimes people would say the actual state of the world. So this is A B, and this is A B. This is the state of the world. This is what's actually true, and this is how the model predicted. So what do I mean? So what I mean is, how many um, cases were there? How many records did we analyze? Well, the total number was here, 5557 plus 41 plus 80 plus 146, whatever that is. That's the total number of records we analyzed. And um, so what you have here is, for example, uh, this one here. You can say, I can ask you what row and what column is that in? And that's in the first row and the second column. So <coughs> the fact that it's in the second column mean well, no, let's start with this. The fact that it's in the first row means that it's actually a zero. In other words, there's actually no gust there, because zero stands for no gust, one stands for gust. So it's the fact that it's in the first row means that it there was there actually was no gust. On the other hand, the fact that it's in the second column means that the model, the neural network, or no, sorry, we did a tree here, predicted that, um, sorry, that the fact that it's in the second column means that the uh, model predicted it as B, in other words, predicted it as 1, in other words, predicted that it, there was a Gus. So this, the, there were 41 cases like that in, in the whole data set, so that means that 41 times when it was actually no gust, the model predicted it as a gust. Okay? Um, and so here, what's this one mean? This is in row two, so that means there actually is a gust, but it's in column one. That means that the model predicted that there wasn't a gust in those cases. So this, there were 80 of those cases. So you can see that these were mistakes. And these are also mistakes. Uh, in statistics, these are called type 1 and type 2 errors. But here uh, we have um, 
they're called false. This one would be called is this a false positive or a false negative? Usually one stands for positive. So is this a false positive or, for, or a false negative? You can ask. Um, so uh, is it? It's predicted positive because it's in the uh, for second column, but it's wrong because it actually is negative. So this is a false positive, right? And this one, this one is uh, predicted as negative, but it's also wrong. So this is a false negative. And here, up here, you get the false positive rate, which is a little different. We'll talk about that, or you can read about that. You can easily find these things uh, on the internet, what the meanings are. False positive rate, the precision, the recall, and so on. OK? So anyway, these are this is an error. These are error. 41 errors here. 80 more errors here. On the other hand, these were correct. This it said that it was um, it's actually no gust, and we predicted that there were. It's in the first column, so we predicted that there was no gust. So 557 correct there, and 146 correct here. So what you can do is you can figure out the overall accuracy is the total number of correct divided by the total number of cases altogether. So that's going to be 557 plus 146 divided by all of the sum of all of this. And that was 85% and something. Okay? And also you can do, do they also give, that's called the correctly classified instances and the incorrectly classified instances are just sort of the opposite of that, right? You can see these numbers add up to 100. That's this one plus this one divided by the whole thing. So that was 14%. OK? Uh, there are other, um, uh, these are called um, e evaluation measures, ways to uh, evaluate the results. So the results, we can say that the overall accuracy, for example, was 85%. Here you can say that uh, false positive rate was 30, 35.4%. Uh, uh, okay, but uh, we have to. You have to. We didn't talk about that. We only, I said what the f false positive was. I didn't say what the false positive rate was here. So uh, let's see. Is that all I'm going to say about this? Yeah. So um, that's all. I, for this video.